All right, hello and welcome to Airgun Ballistics 101 part seven. We are talking about caliber selection and projectile selection in this video. And this was actually supposed to be the last part of the internal ballistic section of the series. Um, but you cannot talk about caliber selection and pellet selection without talking about the exterior ballistic side of things. In other words, how that pellet behaves in flight and down range. So we're going to be dabbling in a lot of external ballistics today, which should be quite fun. And it's also a good way to transition from the internal ballistic section to the external ballistic section. Um, to start things off, I'm going to make a statement um, that applies to this whole video. And that is, it doesn't matter what caliber or what pellet you select, if it's not accurate, it's pretty much useless. So maybe for backyard plinking, it's a right to buy the cheapest pellets possible and you know, just chuck them down range for very little ex expense. But for our purposes, and that is uh, precision air gun shooting and more particularly long range precision air gun shooting, um, accuracy is a non-negotiable. So that takes like the gamo pellets, for example, and throws them right out the window. If you're watching a series like this, chances are you're not watching it for plinking purposes. So, um, you know, I remember my first air gun I ever bought, an Air Arms S410 carbine, Great gun, very accurate gun, but the first pellets I tried in it were gamma pellets. Accuracy was horrendous, so um, it just, just goes to show. It doesn't matter how much money you spend on a gun, if you don't select the right pellets, it's a waste of time. So we're going to kind of assume um, that all these pellets we're going to discuss today are going to be very accurate because um, obviously all, all of these pellets are good quality pellets and they're going to perform differently out of different guns. So we're just going to make the assumption that all of them are accurate. So for the purposes of this video, accuracy is not going to really be a factor. We're just going to talk about um, different pellet shapes, different pellet weights and different calibers. Okay. So now that we've made that point about accuracy being the most important thing, we're going to start off by talking about um, the, the trends you get in, in different calibers, you know, as you go up in calibers, what, what different trends are you going to see? Um, and in general, I've, you're going to see that as you increase uh, the size of the caliber that you're shooting with, with your air gun, um, you're going to see a general increase in muzzle energy, and you're going to see a general increase in the pellet's ability to buck the wind, as you say. Um, and you're going to see a general increase in the pellet's ability to, um, to maintain its velocity downrange and to maintain its, in, its energy. Now, why is that? Is it because of the, the larger diameter of the pellet? No, it's not. You might be surprised to hear this. We're going to discuss that today because many people will go out and buy the bigger calibers thinking, oh, you know, it's going to buck the wind better, um, it's going to maintain its energy better downrange. Generally speaking, that's true. But there's a reason for this, and that's got nothing to do necessarily with the, the caliber of the pellet, but it's got to do with sectional density, ballistic coefficient, and the general shape of the pellet. Okay, so if you look down here, I've arranged a bunch of pellets from 177 to 30 caliber. I um, actually don't have much experience with 30 caliber. I shot for the first time with a 30 caliber in America last year for the extreme bench rest, but I managed to bring home some of these pellets and we're going to talk about all these different calibers today. So everything from 177 to 30 caliber and I've arranged these in order of their ballistic coefficient. Now, before we go any further, let's discuss what ballistic coefficient is. Um, in a nutshell, ballistic coefficient is like a number or a quantity given to um, any projectile that basically states how good it is at maintaining its velocity, maintaining its energy, um, how little resistance it has through the air, cutting through the air. Um, and that all basically results in how flat the traje trajectory is and how, how well it's going to buck the wind. So ballistic coefficient is king. But you'll see a general trend from smallest 177 over here to the largest 30 caliber, an increase in ballistic coefficient. Um, and I say general because you'll see as we go up here that some, sometimes there's a, a swap between the smaller calibers and the bigger caliber. So we've got 
Um, so there are actually exceptions to the rule and you'll notice that uh, these exceptions happen to be pellets that are on the heavy side for their particular caliber. Why is that the case? Um, why do the heavier pellets tend to have b better ballistic coefficients? Well, ballistic coefficient can be broken down into two extremely important factors. Number one factor is sectional density. In general, a pellet with a higher sectional density is going to have a better ballistic coefficient and is going to maintain its energy better downrange. So it's not to do with the heavier pellets maintain their energy better downrange. It's got to do with the pellets with better sectional densities tend to maintain their energy downrange. People confuse those two with each other. So if we look, for example, at a really heavy 2-2 pellet, this is a 25 grain, 22 caliber pellet and we take a 25 grain 25 caliber pellet the 22 caliber pellet for that given area on top of the pellet if you look at the pellets from the top you see that the the surface area or the cross-sectional area of the 22 pellet is a lot smaller than the 25 caliber pellet and that's important because although these two pellets are the same weight the 22 caliber pellet is going to cut through the air easier because it's got a better sectional density. So it's more dense for that particular area that's trying to cut through the air. Here's another kind of example of that. We've got two bullets over here. We've got a 308 and we've got a 260 Remington. And these two cartridges are based on the exact same um, case. So the case capacity of these two is pretty much exactly the same. But what you'll see here is that the um, if you compare these two bullets the 260 Remington bullet the 0.264 diameter bullet has a much better sectional density and aerodynamic build than the, the 308 caliber bullet the 30 caliber and because of that even though these two bullets have the exact same case capacity um, the 260 Remington has more muzzle energy downrange a lot more it bucks the wind a lot better than the 308 and it drops a lot less than 308. It shoots much flatter. So if you shoot these, these two at a thousand meters, um, the 260 is gonna win every single time. That's why I selected the 260 over the 308 for general hunting purposes. Um, but my point is a lot of people come to the conclusion that, oh, I'm gonna get a bigger caliber. You know, I'm gonna change from um, 22 caliber to 25 because it's got more knockdown power and um, because it's less affected by wind. That's not necessarily true. Generally speaking, if you take the two most popular pellets from each of those calibers, so for example, if we take an 18 grain JSB and we take a 25 grain, uh, 25 caliber pellet, um, generally speaking, the 25 is gonna buck the wind better, but that's because of its better ballistic coefficient. It's not because it's heavier. It's not because the caliber is bigger. So that's the first thing I want to draw your attention to. The second thing I want to draw your attention to is um, just the aerodynamic build of the projectile. So there are some cases where the ballistic coefficient is actually higher on the lighter pellet with less sectional density. So I don't have any pellets that illustrate that well, but if we take a look at these two 22 caliber bullets, varmint bullets for my 22 to 50, You've got a Hornady VMAX over here, and you've got a Berger flat-based violent bullet. The Berger is the heavier bullet, so this bullet right over here is heavier. It's got a better sectional density. So in theory, or in terms of a general trend, that bullet should maintain its velocity and should you know, have a flatter trajectory, but that's not the case because of the aerodynamic build of this bullet. The Hornady bullet, not only has a, a little boat tail at the bottom, which helps with its aerodynamics, but it also has that ballistic tip. Um, so the me plat or the, the pointy part of the bullet is um, sharper. So it just cuts through the air better. So the, the obvious choice, you know, um, if these two bullets have exactly the same accuracy, the obvious choice is the Hornady, not only because the ballistic coefficient is better, but also because it's lighter. So it's gonna shoot faster and that's what you want. There is, a, there is a reason why people would choose bigger calibers, um, just because of um, 
the better knockdown power because they carry more energy straight out of the muzzle and yes that is a it is a good reason to choose a bigger caliber um the obviously muzzle energy is very important when you're hitting that target or you're shooting an animal muzzle energy is going to determine how much one of the things that's going to determine how much damage is done when that pellet hits that animal um but it's i would say that accuracy is far more important than um than muzzle energy um just ask these pigeons that were shot with the little 177 a few years ago at long range. <laughs> nice. You can see that those birds were hit really hard. They went straight down. And although those pellets were only probably carrying about 12 foot pounds by the time they hit those, those birds, the, the placement was good. Um, so, if, if the 177 had enough energy um, for hunting animals like that, um, you know, with good shot placement, why, did I, why do I not own any 177s anymore? Why did I choose to switch to 22 caliber? Plain and simple, the, the, the pellets available in 22 caliber tend to have much better ballistic coefficients. So, if we take a look at, at this selection of pellets right over here, we've got... Um, everything from 16 grain JSB to 18 grain JSB, um, 21 grain h and Barracuda, uh, we've got the 25 grain JSB Monster, and we've got a Predator Polymag. Now the Predator Polymag does not have a very good BC at all. So even though this, this pellet is accurate out of some of my rifles, for long range shooting it's not great because it gets blown around by the wind and it, it, um, it loses its velocity and loses its energy more. So although the expansion is excellent, makes a really good close range hunting pellet, um, at longer range, I would choose the heavier pellets any day. So any pellet that can shoot this 25 grain JSB well is gonna be the king, because this thing has a really good BC. It just is quite difficult to find a rifle with a barrel that has a good enough twist rate to stabilize that pellet, unfortunately. Hopefully we'll get there in the future, but let's talk about that later. Um, Let's talk about 18 grain JSB versus 16 grain JSB because a lot of people think, oh, you know, the 16 grain generally has a better muzzle velocity, so it should shoot flatter downrange, correct? No, that's not correct. <laughs> and that's the reason I ended up choosing the 18 grain over the 16 grain. Um, obviously, this, the 18 grain has a higher sectional density. You know, they're both exactly the same caliber, but the 18 grain's got more weight stacked into that same cross-sectional area. Um, so what I found was that the 16 grain and the 18 grain at 50 meters, because the 16 grain was shooting faster, at 50 meters the, the 16 grain would drop less. So the point of impact would be higher, which is obviously more desirable when you're shooting at 50 meters. However, when, you, when I went out to 100 meters, the point of impact of the 18 grain was actually higher. So the 16 grain slowed down so much because of its worst BC, that it actually slowed down and it ended up dropping lower than the 18 grain pellet. So the 18 grain maintained its energy more. And again, that has nothing to do with the weight of the pellet. That's got to do with the um, sectional density and the ballistic coefficient. So in theory, if you could find a 177 caliber pellet with a better ballistic coefficient than the 18 grain JSB, it would be blown around by the wind less and it would shoot flatter. Um, so that's what you want. I don't know if any of you have seen uh, one of Ted from Ted's Holdover's recent videos about, it's called How I Won Extreme Bench Rest 2016. Ted got, Ted's got it right. Um, basically in that video, Ted spoke about the fact that he selected the 34 grain 25 caliber pellet while many other people were selecting the what's this, 46 grain, 30 gallon pellet for extreme bench rest. Um, now the general trend over the years in extreme bench rest is that the people who select the bigger calibers tend to get higher scores. And that's because generally speaking, the bigger calibers have better BCs and do better in the wind. And there's a lot of wind in, in Arizona. So um, everyone, basically everyone who was serious about the competition had selected the 30 caliber and was shooting these 46 grain JSB pellets. But what Ted discovered is that um, the 34 grain JSBs had a higher BC. So against what everyone was expecting the, the smaller calibers to do, um, Ted was able to shoot with a pellet that bucked the wind better 
and had a flatter traje trajectory than the, the 30 caliber pellets. And that was obviously a huge contributing factor to his win. Obviously the work he put in was, was one thing that, that helped him to win. And the fact that he fiddled around a lot with his rifle and got it shooting accurately and consistently. In other words, he eliminated all the flyers and he honed in the, the accuracy of that gun. So as I said, accuracy is king, but if you can select a pellet with a much better ballistic coefficient that's going to do well in the wind, then there's a really good chance of you winning competitions. So with that said, I want to just um, say that when it comes to the time to select a, um, a caliber, it, there's a lot, of, lot more factors to consider than just the ballistic coefficient. That's one thing. So um, other things to consider are cost of, of projectiles. Generally, the smaller caliber pellets are gonna cost you a lot less than the larger caliber pellets. You've gotta consider the amount of air used per shot. So smaller calibers will generally have much higher shot count than the, the larger calibers because they're using less air to push that pellet out the barrel. Um, so my personal opinion is that if you can find a smaller caliber pellet with a high ballistic coefficient that shoots accurately, you have a winner. You don't need to go bigger. You've got more than enough energy, even in the 2-2, to knock stuff down at 100 yards, no problem. General air gun quarry, squirrels, rabbits, pigeons. Um, and if you get that high BC projectile, then um, you've got a pellet that's going to perform really well out that range out of those ranges and even in high winds it's going to you know buck the wind really well so that's what you want um so my, my i'm gonna make a really bold statement here and i'm gonna say that the next big advancement in air gun technology that's going to really take the world by storm is going to be in the in the projectiles these pellets have been the same for who knows how long um, somebody has got to take the step of designing a pellet that's more in the mold of a, a bullet shape with a much higher BC. Whoever can get that right, they are going to win competitions. They're going to make the most accurate gun. The only reason that that hasn't bought on is because most air gun manufacturers don't design barrels that have fast enough twist rates to actually stabilize these projectiles. Um, it's easy when you have a, a rifle shooting, say for example my 22-250 is shooting Hornady bullet at like almost 4,000 feet per second. When you've got speed like that, even a slower twist rate, because that, that bullet's moving so fast, the rotational stability is really fast. You can stabilize a long projectile like that. To stabilize a long projectile like this in a slow moving, uh, out of a slow moving rifle like an air gun, which is limited by the pressures you have in the, in the rifle, um, you need an extremely fast twist rate. An extremely fast twist, twist rate, um, what that does is it creates so much resistance in the barrel that your velocities generally go so low. So, you know, heavy projectile that's long, that needs a fast twist rate, generally there's, there's a compromise that you have to go there. But hopefully there can be some kind of um, revolution going forward where people are somehow able to design air guns that can push more aerodynamic uh, projectiles out at those high speeds accurately. And that's when things are really gonna change. So take this as a challenge. Any manufacturer out there that's watching this, if you can design a barrel that can shoot uh, more aerodynamic projectiles better, then I think you've got a winner. The second thing I'd like to see from pellet manufacturers is I'd like to see um, pellets that are made solely for the point of hunting with that can expand really well like these predator polymags but also have high ballistic coefficients so I'd love to see something like for example even a JSB shaped projectile but with the front a little bit hollowed out and filled with a polymer so you've got exactly the same shape, the exact, exactly the same aerodynamic properties, exactly the same ballistic coefficient, but you've got a projectile that performs better um, terminally. So wind hits that animal, it's gonna expand better. Um, it's pretty much a given with, with bullets. So for example, here's a, a VLD hunting bullet made by Berger that I'll shoot out of the 260. Um, it's got both properties. It's got um, 
it's got a really high BC, it can cut through the air well, um, it maintains its, its energy really well, it's not affected by wind, but it's also designed with a, with a thinner uh, jacket with a little hollow point, and it's, it's made for controlled expansion inside an animal. And that's what you don't have in, in these pellets. And that's a problem because people are wanting to get bigger calibers thinking it's going to help them downrange. But even the bigger calibers, they aren't expanding at all. It would be better to have a 22 caliber that expands nicely than a 30 caliber that doesn't expand at all. You want to dump all that energy inside an animal. And penetration is never an issue when you're hunting with an air gun because those pellets just don't expand. Um, even with a little 177 or 22, even a 30 caliber, which some people think would stop inside an animal, 30 caliber zips, would zip straight through something. So um, what I wanna say is that when you select your, your pellets as well, um, you do need to look at stuff like pellet expansion, especially if you just plan to hunt at close range, um, then you'll wanna look at something like a predator polymag. If these predator polymags are accurate out of your gun, then they are excellent close range um, hunting pellets, better than anything else on this table here. So that's something to look at. And that's where we're gonna bring this one to a close. I hope this video helped you to um, kind of decide in your mind what caliber you need to choose for those of you that are looking to buy an air rifle. And I hope it kind of cleared up some of the misconceptions about caliber size and wind drift or caliber size and um, pellet drop. Um, thank you so much for watching. I hope this helped. I'll see you in the next one.